Welcome to yoga. My name is Nicole, and this will be a one hour, 100% chair class. So in the chair. All right, so we're going to begin by sitting up nice and tall in our chair, feet on the ground, and take a nice big breath in, stretching the hands up, bringing the palms together if they reach, and then bringing the hands to the heart center. That's our exhale. And then we'll inhale, reach up again, nice stretch. And exhale, let the arms float down to your sides. And we'll do that again. Breathe in and lift up. So we're elongating our spines as we reach upwards. Exhale, bring the hands to the heart center. And then inhale up. And exhale down. So if your breath is longer or shorter than mine, just do it at your own pace. Okay, now we're gonna do some shoulder rolls. So our hands can hang down at the sides of our chairs. And we're rolling, bringing the shoulders in towards the neck. So we also are warming up the neck muscles. Giving ourselves a neck massage. And then go forwards. Let's assume you went back at the beginning. A couple more times. Nice shoulder rolls, and then we'll shake the arms out. So we give a good shake to the shoulders as well. And now we're gonna do some breathing exercise, bring the hands to the heart center. This is called bellows. So we fill up the bellows chamber, which is our lungs and reach out with the ribs and the elbows. Then exhale, press back in towards the ribs. And that's when we let out our air. Breathe in, expansion, and exhale, contraction. Inhale, expansion. Exhale, contraction. If your neck allows it, you can even dip it back a little. Inhale, expansion. And exhale, contraction. And then we'll do one more. So lift those elbows, stretch the ribs out, and then bring the arms in, kind of pull up in and upwards on the belly. And then bring the hands to the knees. We're gonna take our ribs around our center line. So we're working to move the upper body by thinking about moving the ribs as a whole. Let's do one more and then we'll reverse our circle. So you can go as close like little tiny circles, or you can really reach those ribs out there or anywhere in between. And a couple more. And then we'll come back to the center. We're gonna reach for our left knee and draw it up towards the chest. So get those hips opening up a little bit front back. And now the other one, reach down and lift the knee upwards. And then place the leg back down. We're gonna swing our arms forward and back. <clears throat> okay, so a couple more times and then we're gonna try to lift our hips up off the chair. Lift and then go back down and swing. So that's kind of preparation for doing a standing chair pose. So if you just want to um, press with one hand on your chair, you can do that. Let's go up again, lift, and back down. And one last time. So I'll show you with one arm this time, which means you're kind of holding on and pressing with one. Let's go up again. Lift, and this time I'm showing with one, and then back down. Nice. 
Okay, so now we're gonna sit back in our chair a bit and work with our legs for a little. So let's first take the left foot up, then the right, left, right. So we're sitting up tall, our bellies are drawn in and upwards. So we're working those abs. <clears throat> and we can draw our shoulder blades closer together and our back, upper backs so that we can kind of strengthen and, and straighten that area. Okay. And now we're going to have the feet on the floor and take the hands out in front. We're going to uh, flex the hands and feet and then point. Flex and point. When you point the feet, you can raise the heels up a little. Flex and point. <clears throat> and then we're going to make circles. So you might want to lift the feet off the ground a little if you can. Otherwise, you can move the feet back and forth. And let's reverse that. And then bring them down. Nice. Okay, let's move to one side. So our knees go off to say the right side, then we'll grab onto the back of the chair and we'll do a nice little twist. It's graduated into four sections. So lifting up nice and tall, take a breath in. And then on the first exhale, move a little bit to your right side, just as far as it's comfortable. And then breathe in, lift up, from the hips again. So the top of the head is rising upwards. And then on the exhale, twist to the side some more, if you're able to go a little bit farther. Again, lift and reach upwards, big breath. Exhale a little more if you can. And then the fourth one. and then slowly come back. Okay, so now on the same side, we're gonna do some chair versions of warrior poses or Virabhadrasana. So take the left leg, aim the knee towards the ground. So we wanna hold out with our right hand. We have our left knee going straight ahead, which we're, we're facing the side, so it's straight ahead. And then take that left foot and slide it back just as far as it's comfortable for you. So the knee can remain bent or you can really reach it out there. The belly stays in, we're lifting. Now we're gonna take the left hand forwards and all the way up and reach. And breathe. So our breathing is full and through the nose as much as we can and also making a sound. That's, that's how we keep track of our breath and help ourselves relax. If you can look up slightly in this pose, go ahead or all the way up. And then bring the arm down. Now we're gonna turn that left hip open and we want the back foot to turn to the side and get the body over the hips. And then if you can let go of your chair, go ahead and take the arms forward and back. The chest is to the side, the hips open to the side. If you need to hold on to the chair with either arm, go right ahead. Now we can also try connecting the outer edge of the back foot, making sure to try and keep an arch. And now let's draw the shoulder blades together again, firming up the back and building strength. And now we'll go 
into another pose, lower the back arm, lift the forward arm up, stretch upwards, turn the palm towards the back, and then slide that left hand down the leg a little so that you can curve nice. There we go, a nice, a nice transition into that curve. Reach with a hand that's on top and then come back up. Great. Now let's have both arms out again in our warrior two. And we're going to lean forward from the hips and bring the right elbow down and the left arm goes up. And then let's try to reach our upper body farther away from the left foot. So we're reaching out in front of the right knee and our, our left arm is reaching and then we slowly come up. And now we're gonna turn back to the front, sitting on the chair the regular way, pad the feet to loosen up a little. And before we go to the other side, we'll do a couple of breathing together exercises. Nice breath in, reach up. It's our breath in. And now lower the left arm and lean to the left side. Reach with the right hand. Then breathe in, lift up. Exhale the opposite way. Inhale, lift up. And bring the hands to the heart center. Now let's do one more bellows breath. Breathe in, elbows go out. Maybe the head goes back. Exhale all the way out. And let's bring our hands down. We're gonna turn the other way. First, do that twist. So a seated, graduated twist, hold on to the back of the chair. And then on the inhale, lift up. And then go one quarter of the way or part way around. We'll go in quarters. Lift up as you breathe in. And then maybe a little farther around if you can, as you exhale. Then breathe in and lift. And a little farther around again, if it feels comfortable. And then the final one, breathe in and lift. And one more time to try going farther in your twist. And then slowly come around, facing the knees. And then holding on with one hand, go ahead and let that right knee come down towards the floor. And then take the right leg back as far as you can, draw the belly in and take the arm forwards and up. So now we're in our chair version of warrior one. If you don't need to hold on to the chair with your hand, lift both arms up, stretch upwards, then anchor the arm or arms into the shoulder sockets and take the gaze or the Drishti up a little higher if you can. So listen to your own body. If your neck doesn't want you to do this lift with your eyes, then just stay facing forward. Breathe again. And then we'll lift up a little, just enough so we can turn that hip out. Now the foot's facing to the side. The body wants to lean forwards, but we bring it right back over the hips. And then the arms go forward and back. And we try to look out beyond that right hand, draw the shoulder blades in and breathe. If we can hold it for another breath. If not, you can lower the right arm sooner. 
Now let's lower the right arm, lift the left one up, stretch, turn the palm back, and then curve. So if you want to slide your hand down the right leg a little, that's fine. Then back up to our warrior two. Now our modified triangle or tripasana. We're going to bend that right elbow, hinge from the hips, and bring the elbow to the knee. Take the right arm up. Stretch the upper body forwards. So we're trying to take it over the knee in front, the bent knee. And breathe. And we can look up towards that right hand if we want to. If it feels good to your neck. Or part way. It's your practice, so just do what really feels good to you. And then slowly come back up. And then we'll bring the legs back to the front and pad the feet again. And then we'll take another breath in, reach up, stretch, and just let the arms go halfway down. Palms face down, spread the fingers out, thumb two, and let's make circles. <clears throat> and now we'll go the opposite way. And then let's let the arms come down. Okay, now we're gonna separate the legs out and scooch a little forwards. We have our knees way out there. All right, so first we're gonna do a little um, uh, shoulder stretch and it also stretches the upper inner thighs, or groin area. So let's take our left shoulder, move it towards the front and then reach it forward and towards the floor forward especially, but some towards the floor. So it's kind of dipping down. And then keep your head up if you need to, or you can let it go down. Feel a nice stretch in the back, the inner thighs and the shoulder, and then slowly make your way back up. Let's take another breath in, reaching upwards. Bring the arms back down to the knees. Left or right shoulder comes forwards, reach. And we can lightly press outward, uh, outwardly in our inner knees. Breathe. And then slowly come back up. And let's take another breath. Breathe in, reach up. This time, bend the elbows and make fists and be really strong in the upper body. And now reach up again. So now we're relaxing, stretching, and lift the heels. And then bend the elbows. Lift the heels as we breathe in. And again, this is a goddess pose. Bend and be strong in the arms and legs. And then relax, nice. Let's bring the knees back in. And we're gonna cross our left ankle on the right knee, sit up nice and tall. We're also gonna flex that foot that's on top. You can flex both feet if you want, but the one on top especially. So the knee is out there to the side, and then we're gonna tip forwards. You may tip just a tiny bit, or if you feel like you can go farther without uh, any problems, then go ahead and continue. I'll turn to the side so you can see what it looks like from the side. The back is straight, the left knee stays down, and we just tip until we can feel it nice, Stretch in that left hip area. We're trying to stretch our piriformis right now, that muscle that is close to the sciatic nerve. So if we keep it nice and stretched out, then there's less chance to have sciatic nerve problems.
And then let's slowly come back up and we'll switch to the other leg. So right ankle, left knee, flex the foot or both feet, lift upwards through the body so we get a nice chance to work on our posture again, straighten the back and then we tip forwards and breathe. So focus on the breath here, especially now that you know what to do in the pose. And you'll be able to feel some stretching going on in your right hip. Just go down as far as it feels comfortable, but it's still stretching. Nice full breath each time. That's the goal anyway. And then we'll go ahead and slowly come back up and put that leg down. Nice. Now we're going to keep our hands maybe on the thighs close to the knees, sitting up nice and tall. We're going to move our head from side to side. Just warming up the neck. So start off real slowly. Go just as far as it's comfortable. We'll do some more. One goal number is a couple sets of eight. So anywhere in that area. And then back to the center. And now we'll slowly nod the head forward, up and down. And just go again, just go as far as it's comfortable. You can close your eyes while you do this if you want. But tracking the eyes with your head movement is also a good idea. And then bring the head back to the center. All right, we're gonna stretch the neck. So let's take our left hand up and then bring the left forearm on top of the head and lift the head. So we make room between the vertebrae and the spine and then tip the head to the left side. Bring the right hand to the right shoulder and slowly draw it downward. Breathe as you stretch. So you're stretching from kind of near the ear, down the neck, across the top of the shoulder, and maybe even a little lower if you are able to pull down the shoulder. Very much. And then we'll slowly bring the head back up to the middle. And then we'll take the right arm up on top, lift the crown of the head. So the, the arm is just lightly up there. And then tip to the right. Bring the left hand to the left shoulder and draw that shoulder downward. So you extend the stretch in the neck and shoulder. Breathe. We'll slowly bring the head back up. Okay, so now we're gonna dip the chin down towards the chest slowly and tuck the chin in a bit. And then we'll feel a nice stretch in the back of the neck. Still focus on the breathing. And then slowly we'll bring the head back upwards, nice. And now we're going to do some movements with our arms. We're going to take them out to the sides. And when we do, we kind of puff the chest forwards. And then we're going to cross the arms. And when we do, we draw the abs inward. Okay? So we just go like this. You can have your arms kind of low, or you can have them um, shoulder level or anywhere in between. So if we're going real slowly, we go with the breath. If you want to go faster, like I automatically did, faster, then maybe you breathe every two or three times. So it's not exactly 
uh, going with the anatomy of the breath. But when we turn this into cow and cat, then we'll go with the breath. All right, a couple more times. And reach the arms out. And bring the arms down, give them a little shake. So now we're going to put our hands on our knees and lean slightly forwards and take a breath in. So we're stretching the upper body and even the neck as we reach the head up and forwards, then round the back and kind of press against the knees with your palms. Spread the fingers out, draw the belly in and curve the back. Then breathe in, extend. Then exhale, curve back, spread the fingers out, have the heels of the hand or the palms on the knees. Breathe in, stretch, elongate, up and forwards, exhale, draw back. Inhale, stretch, exhale, draw back. And two more. Inhale, forward. Exhale, draw back. So our belly's coming in. And inhale, spread the fingers as you exhale then and draw back and come back up. Nice, all right. So uh, now we're gonna take our arms out and up and twist to the side a little bit, bring the hands to the heart center, twist a little more if you can, and then tip forwards so that the elbow is trying to go down. So if you're on the right side, down to the right knee. So this is a modification of a pose that's done um, also in a lunge. So we're skipping the lunge part and just doing the twist. And then come back up. Let's take our arms down and reach up. Twist to the side, bring the hands to the heart center. Then tip forward so that you can put that elbow on the outer knee on the knee that's on the side you're on. And we just reach with our whole upper body. So we're elongating through the spine during the twist. And then slowly come back up and turn to the front. Let's scooch back in our chairs a little, mix things up a bit. Take the feet out in front of us and turn the knees out a little bit. So we're opening the hips slightly out to the side, and then we're gonna cross the legs. So then we'll be able to use our inner thigh muscles. You can have your feet pointed, or you can have them not pointed. But I like to point mine for this one. You can go as fast as it feels right to you. and then bring the feet together and down on the floor. Nice. Okay, so we're gonna do a forward fold. If you're not keen on having your head low, then let's just go ahead and leave the head up higher. Don't go down as far. So nice stretch in Then bring the arms down and reach for the shins. Follow the shins downward to bring the chest down towards the thighs. And then keep looking up and keep your head up if you don't want to go that far. If you are comfortable with that, just go ahead and collapse down onto your, uh, onto your thighs and let the head go down. Then bring the hands to the knees and slowly come back up. So that was of our forward fold. Now we're going to do another stretch to the side. So hold on with the left hand, take the right arm up. Stretch upwards and then do a nice lean over to that left side. We're reaching with the hand, spread the fingers out and try to keep the arm in line with the ears. 
We're holding it a little longer this time, two breaths instead of one, and then back up. And now let's take our left arm up, stretch, fingers spread, lean to the side, breathe. We're gonna be here, so total of two breaths. Approximately, everybody's breath is different, so it depends. And then back up, nice. All right, next we're gonna do some more breathing exercise this time. It's gonna be our lion's breath. So this is the way we do it. We bring our hands up with the, as if our lion paws are facing forwards and take a huge breath in. And then we lurch forwards, bring the hands down to the knees, tip forwards from the hips, open up the mouth as you're exhaling. <sighs> That's when you roar and cross the eyes if you can think of that too. Ready? Here we go. Big breath in. And exhale. And breathe in. Exhale. Breathe in. Big lung expansion. Exhale. And the last one. Breathe in, big reliance breath. Exhale. All right, and then just sit back up. Okay, so now we're going to cross our left leg over the right one. And this is our seated eagle's pose. So if you're able to, you can tuck your foot around behind the other one or cross leg like is fine, or bring cross and then bring it close. Any of those three are for sure fine. And then so our left leg is out, our left arm's gonna go forwards. We're gonna wrap our right arm around and then see if we can bring our palms together. They don't have to match up exactly because they can't. Um, anyway, so we have our palms together as best they can do and then we're going to be stretching the muscles in the upper back by lifting the arms up just to whatever degree works for you. So we're sitting up nice and tall and we're trying to uh, get a little bit of a stretch in the back by lifting the arms. So eagle's pose. And then we're going to slowly bring it down. Unwind the arms and uncross the leg. Nice. Let's pad the feet a little bit just to keep things loose and wiggle around a little up on top. And then we'll do the other side. So let's cross now, tuck around if you can. And then we'll take the right arm out, wrap the left arm under, Bring the palms together, and then we're going to try to lift them. So we stretch, and we can kind of send them a little bit forward too, and feel a nice stretch. So breathe. Focus on the breath here, since we're in one place, just slowly, slowly moving upwards. Turn slightly to the side, in case you need a different angle. And then slowly bring it down. Unwind the arms, uncross the leg, and tap the feet again. Nice. Let's take a breath in so our arms get a chance to reach up again. Weave the fingers together, press the palms up, maybe even a little back bend like this if it feels good. If not, straight up is fine. And then bring the arms down. And let's all turn to the side now because we're going to reach our arms back behind. Weave the fingers together there. Press the palms back and down. That brings the shoulder blades together and pulls the chest nice and open because the shoulders are reaching back. We're breathing. And now another chance for a forward fold. 
for those of you who want to. Bring the chest lower, let the arms float up just as far as is comfortable. And you can have the knees slightly apart if you want to bring the chest a little bit between the thighs. And only let the head hang down if it feels good. We'll change the weave in the hands so the other thumbs on top. And then we'll slowly come up. So however far down you went, go ahead and return. And then let's shake our arms. Okay, now we're gonna scooch over to the left side of our chair and we're gonna do some reaches in circles, like we're doing the backstroke swimming, but we're gonna spread our fingers out. Nice big circles. Hmm, this does feel good. So go around. If you have problems with your upper arm shoulder and can only go part way, then, turn, then just go right back the way you came, almost like a pendulum swinging, that's fine too. Okay, now we're gonna reverse it. Focus on your breathing, so you're coordinating the breath with the movement. Usually it works best to, as you're going upwards, you're expanding, that's a good time to inhale. And bring the arm back. Okay, let's hold on to the chair, lift the hips up, move over to the other side, and we'll do the same thing. Let's start with our backstroke again. Go at whatever speed really works for you, especially if you are able to coordinate with your breath. Two more. Oh no, just one more and then let's reverse it. And this is Definitely more exercise than it looks like it would be. Let's bring the arm back. Sit back into the middle of the chair and take the legs out in front. Okay, so we're gonna swoop the legs over to the right side and then send them out in front again. So I like to hold on to my chair and then swoop them to the left and out in front. Right and front left and front. So you can adjust the speed if you want, or you can go along with me, up to you. Probably notice that we do some arms, then some legs, then some stretching, then some strength. So I'm trying to uh, 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 suggest a lot of poses and activities that work the whole body and in all different ways. And last one, legs out in front, and then bring them down. So we're gonna separate the knees again, and we're gonna lift up on the toes, bring the heels down, and then lift the toes, and bring them down. Lift the heels, down, lift the toes, down, heels, Toes, I sped it up. Heels, toes, heels, toes, heels, toes, heels. Last one. Okay, now we're going to take our left hand and reach down towards the calf. We're going to keep the hips open because we're going to be stretching inner thighs still too. Lift up the right arm and then slide that left arm down a little and reach toward the space above the left knee and reach away from the body so we're elongating the spine. So this is a nice twist and it gives us a chance to uh, 
uh, do another sort of a balance out to the side and then come back up. And now we'll go the other way. So with that right hand, move it down below the knee, twist the body so that your body is more in line with that front leg, lift the arm up, and then slide it down. So this might be reminiscent of Trikasana for you or triangle. And you can even send that arm way down if it feels good to you. And then slowly come back up and we'll bring the feet in like this. Toes come in, heels come in, toes come in and Heels come in. Now we're going to stretch our shoulders. So let's take our left arm up, bend at the elbow, and bring the right hand up to help guide the elbow around. One thing we want to try to do is have the head still in line with the rest of the spine. So we want the head above the body. The uh, left hand is reaching either across towards the other shoulder or downward depending on how flexible you are today. And then we're gonna try converting that. Take the right arm around and try to reach up the back. It's just for a little bit to see if you can get those fingers closer together. Maybe even hold, hold them, each, other, each of the hands hold on to the other hand. And then unwind and shake. Shake the arms and shoulders and even the hands. Give them a good whippy kind of shake with the hands and fingers. And then we'll go to the other side. Let's lift our right arm. First stretch, my fingers are spread out. You can try that too if you want. Bend at the elbow and bring the left hand up. And wiggle it around so the head can still be above the body. And breathe. Take another nice deep breath. Breathing through the nose as much as we can. And then we will convert it into the other version. Take that left arm and reach the hand up the back. See if you can get those fingers to touch, maybe or to hold on to each other like little hooks. And then we'll slowly unwind that and shake the arms again. All right, so now we're gonna do a coordination move. So let's have our feet flat on the ground and hold on to the knees. Then we're gonna move the knees together and switch. And then move, and then move them together, switch, switch. Switch, switch. A couple more times. This is for fun and for the brain, right? And then back together. Let's sit back in our chair. We'll do a little bit more of our legs. Okay, we're gonna have our feet down on the floor. They can be a little bit farther in front though. And then we're going to take them out to the side and back together. Out, together, out, together, out, together. We can keep going. And while we do that, draw the belly in and upwards. Chest is nice and high and forwards. Shoulder blades are drawn in. And you can probably feel your core working here. And then together. Okay, now let's lift our left knee again. We're gonna bring it towards the chest like we did before, but then we're gonna take it out to the side. So we get another chance to open up that hip and then bring it back to the center and down. And now the other one. Lift it up, move it out, and then back to the center, 
and down. Very nice. Okay, so now we're going to lift our feet again and, the, and our arms here, and we're going to scrunch the toes and make this. So we're going to be working our toes and fingers. Now spread the toes out as far away from each other as they can. Fingers too. Then scrunch them up. So that's our exhales, the scrunch. And you can keep your heels on the ground if you need to. Then inhale, stretch. Scrunch. And then stretch. And one more scrunch. And then stretch. And bring it down. Now we're going to stretch our thighs. So we're going to, just like we did before, lift and move to the edge of the chair a little bit closer. And then our left foot is going to go back a bit and hang over the side of the chair. So our knee goes down. And hopefully your chair is sturdy enough so you won't tip over. So you might want to move. Uh, sideways so you can hold on to the back of your chair, grab onto the foot and bring it closer to the buttocks. So you can get a little bit of a thigh stretch. So it actually does seem safer if you hold on to the back of the chair, but up to you. It's your practice. And then we'll release that and switch around so you can do the other thigh. So now reach back for the right thigh, uh, ankle or foot and just draw it in. And then think about drawing in the abdominal area, the shoulder blades, the head. If you feel like your head's going forwards here like this, just draw it back up above the body and kind of tuck in the chin. And then slowly release that. And let's sit down on the chair facing forwards. So it's almost time for us to do Shavasana. We're going to be doing our Shavasana in the chair. So what that really means is we will try to find a way to relax as fully as possible. So let's begin that by doing some breathing again, lifting up. Reaching up with the arms. Exhaling, bringing the hands to the heart center. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, let the arms float out and down. And then reach for the left foot and bring it up onto your chair. Okay, so we're doing a half of a butterfly. And then if you can, reach down, bring the other foot up and be in a full butterfly. So if we hold on to our ankles, we can let just the outer edges of the feet touch. You may have to do this on the floor, but more like this, and that's fine because our yoga practice is, is just that, it's a practice or a process. So if you have the feet on the chair though, you can kind of roll your pelvic floor down and back, open up the feet so that the soles of the feet are facing upwards and lift through the crown of the head. And close the eyes. Or we will shift to a an easier position for most people when we go into Shavasana. So one more breath here. And then we'll release our butterfly. And find a comfortable seated position. So rock the pelvic floor back and down so you're Lower back can be nice and straight. So you can cross the feet at the ankle if you want. Turn the palms up if you want. 
And then we can find a mudra that works for you today. Let's try bringing our middle two fingers up to the thumb. That's a nickname to deer mudra. So it looks kind of like that, kind of like a shaka, only the thumb and the middle fingers are touching, middle and ring. So just go ahead and leave the backs of your hands with that mudra or hand position and remain sitting up tall. If you feel more comfortable sitting with your legs bent on the chair, that's fine too. And then you can um, feel more like you're on the floor. So let's close our eyes. And we'll begin by relaxing the muscles around the top of the head, the crown of the head, the back of the head and relax the temples. Nice full breathing as we go. Relax your forehead. Just soften the muscles there and the eyebrow. Relax your eyes. The outer corners of the eyes too. The area under the eyes so those muscles can soften out towards the ears, the cheeks, across the bridge of the nose, around the nostrils. Relax the upper lip, and the lower lip, and the tongue. And relax all sides of the jaw. Feel your breath expanding inside your body and then contracting as you exhale. Feel the shoulders relaxed and down. Continue breathing in Shavasana for a few more minutes. more breath.
Let's bring our awareness back to the class, wiggle the toes and hands. Maybe make waves with your hands. And now let's stretch the back of the wrist by drawing one hand in towards the inner wrist. And then switch to the other one. Now we'll take a big breath in, take the arms above the head again, expanding upwards. Bring the hands to the heart center and we'll do three ohms so you can listen or participate. Big breath in. Oh. Oh, Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Peace, peace, peace. I honor the light within you. Namaste. And thank you for being here. Yay.